Hello, everyone. I'm Wei Ping Wu, uh, the director of the Master in Urban Planning Program, or Master of Science in Urban Planning Program here at Columbia. And I have my two colleagues join me today. But before I ask them to introduce themselves, let me quickly say uh, another welcome and also um, share two resources with you in the chat box uh, as you talk. Uh, or as you join this session. And one of the reasons I'm sharing this is that yesterday we had a fantastic day welcoming many admitted students in person. And I know you're not, you, some of you were not able to make it. So the first link I just shared with you, um, soon there will be a recorded session of the introduction and overview of the curriculum from yesterday to be posted on that page. So stay tuned and you'll see more um, information on that page. And then the second link um, is the uh, landing page of the urban planning program. I would encourage you to um, explore, discover and connect with us um, by reading some information on this pa two pages carefully, especially on the first page, um, there are number of student works as well as a program booklet that you can download to read with you know whatever time you need. And I would encourage you to do that and then reach out us to us uh, with any questions. So. Let me allow my colleagues to introduce themselves. And then we're gonna start with um, a few common questions the students ask uh, faculty. And, um, and then you should feel free to drop down your questions in the chat box. I will monitor that. Or just raise your hand electronically and I will get to you. It's probably a little easier uh, to put in the chat box. And this is a session to really um, have a conversation between you and the faculty. So it's not about overviewing the program. And so um, let me start with my colleague, Anthony. Hi, everyone. Um, I am an assistant professor here in the program, uh, actually realizing uh, all the, the people speaking today are also recovering designers. Um, so I also do have a, a design background if you're coming from that. Um, but I teach uh, primarily in the urban analytics sequence. Um, I would kind of categorize myself as an urban technologist. So I personally, in my research and some of my teaching, look at the intersection between technology, um, urbanism, and the people that inhabit uh, these fantastic or sometimes not so fantastic urban spaces and thinking about how we utilize that data either through the creation of it or the analysis of uh, readily made data sets to actually improve the urban condition for folks. I guess it's my turn. Um, so good morning, everybody. Can everybody hear me? Anthony, yeah. raise your hand if you can hear me. Great, okay. So um, so I'm, I'm Douglas Woodward. I'm the Associate Director of the Program for Professional Development and practice, and what that means in English is um, career services mainly. And then also um, I coordinate studios and I've been an adjunct since 1991. So I also teach mainly um, New York centric um, courses um, like zoning and, and other sort of um, practical things um, in the New York area. And I'm trained as an urban designer, and I founded the Urban Design Group um, at the Department of City Planning, where I was for 18 years, followed by um, a stint at Lincoln Center, and then 10 years at a developer. So I've been at, you know, in the government, in the not-for-profit world, and then also in the the, um, the private um, development market. So um, so that brings um, an interesting. Um, I think perspective to both courses and also to um, to placements for students for um, for their first jobs and internships. 
Thanks, Douglas. Um, I just want to add really quickly, everyone, I am thrilled that Douglas is with us because I actually, in the last few years, have pushed very hard for this program to have this capacity of career service and advising. It's really beyond service. It's advising to really make sure when you come to our program, your aspirations for your career are connected closely to what you study in the program. So Douglas um, talks with every student one-on-one -on -one, in addition to many career service, you know, the regular activities you see in on college campuses, right? So you obviously also will have um, connections with an academic advisor. So Anthony, myself, and the other full-time faculty members also perform that role. So really quickly, introduction to myself, for myself. Uh, I've been a faculty here and program director since 2016. Before that, I taught at uh, Tufts University as well as Virginia Commonwealth University. And my uh, teaching responsibilities here are both in the master's program and in the uh, doctoral program. And uh, in the master's program, I teach um, uh, studio every other year and the thesis. Um, all of the full-time faculty um, advise thesis and the capstone. And I also teach an elective on um, Chinese urbanism in global context. So with that, uh, let me start with uh, a few questions to my colleagues and I can also chime in. Uh, I really would encourage you to put down your questions in the chat box and feel free, don't be shy. Planning students are always the uh, courageous bunch. So I hope to see some questions. So let, maybe let me start uh, with both of you, Anthony and Douglas, right? So um, what do you see as the kind of faculty student relationship uh, at GSAP, uh, especially in UP, right? Uh, uh, what kind of individual attention do you give to students? and how accessible you are as a faculty. Um, so maybe we'll start with Anthony. I mean, I think that's the highlight, to be honest. I've had you know, an opportunity to be at a couple of universities now. Um, and I think the availability of faculty, I think is, is really a highlight of this program. Uh, perhaps, you know, sometimes I've been told to a fault uh, for myself. Sometimes I need to make a little bit less time, but I think that's a favorite part. Some of you uh, even saw me kind of in the hallway at the coffee shop when we were having what was supposed to be a short discussion and ended up being a little bit longer. But I think that's the hallmark. I think especially the full-time faculty being very around, um, the chances to kind of speak, engage with both curricular and extracurricular aspects. Um, and I know Doug will speak a little bit um, about engagement with his office, but I think, you know, for us, uh, the faculty represent a lot of different uh, professional paths. We all have varied professional experiences in varied parts of the world. And I think my observation is that students, you know, uh, have been very kind of open and willing to engage with us in thinking about what are the paths, be it traditional or non-traditional, how do we shape our classes, what are the questions that classes are asking? What's going on in the larger world? So I think that there is that kind of strong engagement. But but I'll say, you know, I think one aspect is every program will say that. I think the other strength of our program that is very unique to us is that the adjunct faculty are in the, it, it, what, you know, kind of in the best spirit of the adjunct. They are being in a city like New York, bringing professional experience and seeing the amount of students engaging with someone who is currently you know, preparing something that will go before DCP or someone who's working in government and having that connection with people who are very engaged both here at GSAP, but also very engaged in practice, I think is a real hallmark, you know? And sometimes there are kind of interesting debates that happen, you know, between that of what happens in the classroom, what happens in the world. And we, you know, could really think about how the sausage is made in shaping these better environments. So I think that connection with the faculty in an intimate way here, uh, I think is like kind of just really special and, and a strong hallmark. And I think it actually strengthens a lot of the classes because there's a lot of information being shared that reemerge in different conversations both informally and formally. Right, right. One of the things that, one of the things that Anthony is talking about, I think is really important. And that's that at GSEP practice and are not opposed 
that they're actually complementary. And so um, when you get out into the world, you'll use the theories and the, um, you know, the GIS and the other things that you've learned at, um, at GSAP, but you'll also have an appreciation beyond what other schools have, I think, in terms of what the practical consequences are of the things that you've learned. And um, being an adjunct myself and coordinating studios, one of the really nice things about adjuncts you'll find is not only are they committed to the program, and they are very committed, but at the same time, they are a great source of jobs. So um, you shouldn't be shy at all in, in having adjuncts um, help you um, sort of navigate the um, job world. I'll certainly do it as well, but I can point you to adjuncts who are teaching in the program, who are at the firms that you want to work at. I mean, you will find very often in New York, um, we have a lot of international firms as well. And so we're not, it's not just the local department of city planning or the local parks department that we have contacts at. We also have contacts at AECOM and Europe and, and international organizations that are centered in New York as well. And so this is a conversation that the way Ping mentioned, I have one-on-one -on -one with every student that we have in the program just to learn about you and sort of to figure out with you what kinds of things you want to do internships and jobs. And we do very well right in the middle of interviewing and people are getting interviews right and left. So there are a lot of practice interview sessions that I've been uh, running out of the office. Yeah, let me just add really quickly, and um, you might know, have noticed that uh, the number of full-time faculty in this program is quite moderate, in the sense that both by necessity, but really also in, to some extent by design, because we are in uh, New York, we are a professional program, and we really like to see our master's students very much career ready uh, by the time they graduate. So we have about 40 adjunct faculty um, to, in the program. Um, so um, they are oh. seasoned practitioners and they are uh, very much uh, in, you know, in the spirit of uh, helping um, the next generations of planners to um, uh, blossom. So uh, they are very committed to the program. And uh, I work quite intensively with each and every one of them in terms of um, you know, helping them on board with teaching and developing syllabi and developing teaching pedagogies, developing you know, methods of student engagement within the classroom. And then um, many of them, in fact, uh, stay with us uh, uh, continuously. Some, you know, Douglas, for example, has been with us uh, for an extended period of time. And so this adjunct um, faculty group uh, is something we, we feel a very, very unique feature of the program. And also, as Douglas was saying, we really try to prepare students not just for your um, you know, mainstream, common, um, and typical planning jobs. We are now increasingly getting adjunct faculty who are in the urban tech sector, who are in uh, consulting, who are perhaps in real estate practices where in these sectors there are increasing roles and functions for planners. And then we really do feel for planning the profession to grow and uh, we need to expand. And, and that's what where our program is doing. And, um, and we have expanded our curriculum accordingly so that uh, we have, you know, for students knowledge and skill acquisitions in neighboring fields, but with very strong planning um, uh, orientation. So let me also then follow up this question with another one to Anthony first. That is, uh, in what ways do you collaborate with students who are interested um, in research, uh, uh, perhaps even going on to further research career or uh, doctoral studies? Um, so I'll, one of the other aspects, so uh, since we made mention of our uh, adjunct 
colleagues who are bringing in kind of professional experience. I think one of uh, our jobs as the full-time faculty is that we're doing a lot of research in a way, kind of asking questions of the built environment or taking things forward. And there are many opportunities for my, from myself uh, and from colleagues to engage in this type of research. And I think what's interesting is, is that we all kind of a, have a different take on what urbanism looks like. So I know that um, Hiba Buakar just had a big um, symposium here on campus looking at Middle Eastern studies. So she was working with both masters and PhD students to flesh out kind of that discussion, looking at the state of research out there. I'm working with uh, one master student where she is uh, running a natural language processing algorithm on street view images to see if we can actually catalog all the languages being spoken in the suburbs. Right? You know, so there are direct engagements in working with us in answering kind of these questions that may have future implications or may look at the built environment in different ways that may ultimately inform policy or how we think about the built environment. Uh, you know, it, in many cases, there are uh, maybe more uh, uh, projects that are geared towards implementation. And there are many ways that you can engage with us with that. There are also a couple labs as well um, that master students have uh, engaged with quite a bit. Uh, for instance, um, the Center for Spatial Research has quite a few master students. So they're doing a lot of really interesting work in, in between kind of urban data, science, uh, critical cartography, sociology, digital humanities. Where you, could, where you could kind of flesh that out. And that, that'll that say all of these are coming from, you know, the faculty side and being kind of the intellectual base. You all also have chances to do research in, you know, you'll definitely do that in your thesis or capstone where you are in the driver's seat and you're engaging with us, being able to kind of derive, um, hypothesize a, a phenomenon in the built environment and taking that forward. And sometimes those kind of conversations spill back and forth between our research and your research. Uh, there's also, I'll say, uh, a couple students here as well that I've talked to have also began, especially I think because we have this base of uh, of kind of technical skills. Again, I have a bias towards you know working with people who have kind of maybe more data skills. Um, other people on campus are also looking for you too. I know a colleague of mine in engineering is uh, potentially taking on one of our master students for a summer uh, research position just because engineering has sometimes deeper pockets than we do. Um, so be able to support that. Um, so, the, you know, that, that's in brief, but I think that there are many ways that you can engage and it comes from multiple sides. And I'll also say another secret that there's money floating around on campus. Uh, so if you wanted to do your own independent research, uh, there's ways to support that from the resources on campus. And just to plug, a few of our students also participated in projects in the city as well. So data by design, a couple of students got, I think it was $6,000 or so to do an installation, a data centric installation for open data week in the city. A couple of our students also came up with a project and they did a session at open data week, which is a citywide project, uh, a citywide initiative. So there are chances to even kind of go beyond us. But I think, you know, the there's a strong kind of culture here of, I want to say entrepreneurship when it comes to asking questions, you know, and taking it forward into doing really interesting things with research at different scales from the potential publishable paper, you know, or if you're interested in the doctoral studies, working with faculty to your own personal initiative, like the Open Data Week for your portfolios. You know, there are different ways to look at it. Thank you. For my opinion, at least. Yep. So let me actually share with you all a link, uh, which you can open now. Um, it actually, right now, it doesn't have a whole lot of information, but once you enroll, you will get um, um, email during the summer for these RA positions uh, you can apply for for the fall. And um, for spring positions, the application process usually opens in October or um, um, November. And so, uh, as Anthony was saying, all of the full-time faculty members in this program work with at least one student as an RA, and you can find out about the um, faculty research interest in this program booklet I just put in the chat box, which is also on our main webpage, as well as the open house webpage for urban planning program. 
There you will see who the full-time faculty are and what their research interests are. So I mean, I'm being completely honest. So with RA positions, uh, it's possible for first year students to get um, because of the matching of research interests. But for teaching assistantships, generally they are uh, offered to second year students because they need to assist courses of first year, right? So they will, she should have uh, taken those um, courses already. So each year, the urban planning program has 18 positions. Uh, each position is one semester and which has both tuition benefit, roughly $8,400. And then uh, plus about little over 3000 stipend. And then as Anthony was saying, there's other units in, um, in the school that you can also apply for RAs. And then there are units across campus, which you would then be more in charge of looking for those information. But all of the positions within GSAP would be made known to you uh, during the summer if you decide to enroll 